Cool. Don't get dragged about where you know you're looking somewhere else and people are getting in on the blind side. No, just keep your eyes open when you're tracking, all right? Join in. And also, we did some work which was with Chrissy Wild, which was there. Like he was trying to play into Billy's feet and we was losing it. You know, he's looking to do that. He'll give you a few digs. You know, Come on, you know, just be sensible, right? Okay? Yeah, sweet. All the best, Yuzi. All the best, Yuzi. Have a good time, son. It's a professional, it's great to get on with lads and the players and vice versa. And you know, they've got my respect. Um, but they've got to do the business. They've got to end up doing the job that we, you know, they're in the team for. And if they can't maintain those standards, well then we have to find somebody who can. You know, it's not a personal thing, it's not something against them as an individual. When I drop somebody, I don't pick them because I like them or dislike them, or whether they may have had an argument with me in the past, that's immature. All I do is pick them on the basis that they're gonna do the job for Sheffield United and win the game for us. We're just winning 4-2 today. That gives us 81 points. Leeds getting their results 82, Newcastle 80. We've got a midweek game against Blackburn. If we win that game, we're automatically promoted. Otherwise, if we don't or we draw, then it goes to the last game of the season. All three of Pardon? Three teams. Yeah, well, it, it certainly is for Newcastle and Leeds are already the, the last game of the season. We can eliminate that. We can kill it off in a penultimate game. But uh, otherwise, it'll be all down to the death on May the 5th.
But I think managers' wives could uh, resent football, I think, definitely, because it takes up so much time. And Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are football days. And there's a fair chance that he'll go off in the morning about half past eight and he won't come in till midnight plus because he's at the club all day long and then he'll go on to a game in the evening. If there's a game on, David will be there. He doesn't bring it home. I think he gets rid of his frustrations in the dressing room. Um, once he walks through the front door, he's usually got over it by then. I mean, he, he might have a little dig sometimes when we're on our own. He might sort of say, oh, um, I, I should have made changes. It was my fault. You know, something like that. Well, when I walk in, they say sort of, is that the boyfriend or the dead mum? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, it's difficult. I mean, obviously, I think from Chris's point of view, she would like to see me see me more. And I think most wives probably, or, or football managers' wives, or even uh, executives in other businesses, for example, would want us to have more sort of closer links. But sometimes your jobs do force you where you've got to work and sometimes with the team go away for a match you have to go we go on tours as well and that's part and parcel of the job these seat belts up I haven't done everything. I haven't won the FA Cup. I haven't been to Wembley. I haven't won the First Division. You know, you, you, you know the titles or the ambitions you'd like to do. I mean, yeah, I've done well. I've done a lot of things in the uh, Second, Third, and Fourth Division that a lot of First Division managers haven't done because a lot of them have never been down there. But having said that, I've not achieved what I want to do, and you just keep pushing on. We live in a day and age now where uh, a lot of boards and a lot of fans overreact to defeat. They, you know. They, it, People are striving for success more and more, and they don't like their team losing. You just you just try and survive in the game as long as you can. You you need a little bit of luck on occasions, and you you, you do the, do your best, and that's all you can hope for. And you just sometimes need that little bit of luck. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't talented people or anything that do their jobs. They do, but uh, you know I've seen some talented people go out the game. Who I thought were quite good, but they just not had the break at the right time, or the team's lost a few games, or and they're on their bike, as they say. I just hope they're on my bike. <laughs> so Trace will be in goal, um, Chrissy and uh, Barnsley will be fullbacks, Illy and uh, Guppy centre halves, Central will be Bob and Wilf, Wide will be Woody and uh, Jock and up front will be Tony and Dino. And I should pick the subs tomorrow, so... Well, we know what uh, we want. And we go about it in a certain way, obviously. And uh, we are misfits in regards that David played prof uh, semi-professional and then professional for Wimbledon for a year. And had his own business at the same time, so he's astute on that side. I had my own business as well. I was an electrical contractor and played non-league football and I played with Dave as a youngster. Well, he was a youngster when he came to play with me, actually. Uh, he came at 16. So I know him, I've known him now for 30 years, possibly. You saw him, but did you get the ball? Yeah, I got the ball, yeah. Yeah, well, you got the ump because it worked, have you? No, he's got the ump to change his, his role and he was quite happy with the other role. What role did you want to do? Run up centre forward and Dean's it go to right wing? Just would he come like in? A, no, just running around like a nutter, really. Yeah. Right. You know the players you can bully, and you know the ones you can't bully. So you've got to bring the best out of them by either stroking their heads or really getting after them. And if I think he goes too strong on one of them, I, I jump in and smooth it out. And if I think if he goes soft on another one, I go the other way. So it's a working relationship, really.
Have I got permission to come and see you in ten minutes? No. Thank you very much. You all want your f***ing little say now. You all want to have a little chip back in training, and that's the f***ing rewards of plenty. Where you f***ing got there, and you don't want to do what you did earlier in the season. Because you ain't doing what you did earlier in the season. You ain't going to broke. There's nobody wanting to get in there and really f***ing score a goal. There's crosses coming in. They're getting on the end of it. I tell you, they had more desire to win it tonight than you f***ing lot. What about the bounce up there? They have an attack! Well, you always an excuse. <laughs> throw there, Bob. Nobody's near you. You head it to him. When? There. When the free kicks go. Just head the f***ing thing for a corner, and then we all stand and watch. Now you must. Hold on. How many times have got to tell you everything to push over? How many times? And Deansy, you and Tony, when we got a free kick, you're both standing, you're having a what ball, what's Deansy? We want you a f***ing way from it. Liven up your thinking. I think a lot of you look as if you've been on a f***ing piss or something. I know you haven't. We've reached a point. It always f***ing happens out in the Wimbledon as well, where we all now want to have a little say. We all know that there's always an excuse. No, I haven't made an error. I was going in because someone else was going to do this. I didn't mark him on the front because I was doing this. So what we've now got to the situation where let's have a little <laughs> jolly up and say to me and Jeff, let's have a little pop. Instead of doing the f***ing job and getting doing what we ask you to do, you're just doing now in between. And that's where you're getting in between results and in between performances. I mean, the dressing room is something... Uh, that it's a, sort of an inner sanctum to the football people and what goes on in there is, is our business, it's our workplace, it's our workshop and we have to try and put things right. We have to try and get our objectives right at that particular time and you come home and your family life is... I mean, there's times when your family life can be tense and the girls have to be told and put in their place and I have to put in, be put in my place as well. But uh, no, ideally, you, you don't live in that emotive situation all the time. Football is an emotive and volatile game. And what happens is, you know, the dressing room is at half time or at the end of the game, evolves about what's happened at that particular time. So sometimes it's not all sort of uh, plain sailing and patting on the back. You know, you've got to get affect people because you've either got to affect them for the second half or affect them before the game uh, starts, or you've got to leave them with some thought about what's going to happen next time. What makes it work really is he can mingle and switch off. When I, when I say that, it's like it can be one of the boys, like if they go out on a Wednesday evening and he can mingle, they could go to a nightclub and have a laugh and a jolly up with them, and then he'll switch off next morning. And he, when he switches off, he switches off. We call it an head. He gets different heads on, you know, and uh, his training head is completely different from his social head. We have for you tonight five lovely ladies, any one of whom will be proud to wear the sash of Miss Sheffield United 1990. What we're going to do now is introduce you to our five contestants. And first of all, if we could welcome our ladies who are taking part this evening in the Miss Sheffield United competition. Your favourite player is Mark Todd. Have you ever met Mark? Yeah, I met him last year when um, he was awarded Player of the Year at our supporters club. And did you vote for him? Of course. Of course, and he's a great player. We wish Mark Todd well. Ladies and gentlemen, that means our winner, the 1990 Miss Chevrolet United, representing Kiverton Park, is Louise Bartles. <laughs> Hello, Louise, and here's the winner of our Woodcock Travel voucher, the holiday voucher, some cash, tickets for the matches, a kiss from Harry. All this ours. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give her another rising round of applause. Louise Bartles, Miss Sheffield United, 1990. Please welcome again, Harry Bassett. I don't think I re really should be speaking because it's Louise's night tonight, not mine. But uh, having said that, it's a great night for everybody to turn up uh, I arrived last year and obviously I made the wrong choice. 
and uh, was uh, kicked off the judges panel this year and uh, some other sensible people came in. Uh, I'm glad to say probably the judges and the referee were much better than the wanker that was at Barnsley last week. <laughs> A lot of people asked me what I said to him and I went out to say to him that uh, I was in love with him and would he like to have an affair with me. He said no comment, so uh, he said there's some good news Harry and there's some bad news. I said what's the bad news? He said I've heard you're a puff. I said what's the good news? He said I love you. <laughs> That's what we have to put up with. As a manager, I think I'm entitled to go and ask the referee why those decisions are made, because uh, it, I want clarification sometimes. And it's not always because a manager goes up to a referee that he's actually going to have a go at the referee. It might be a, quite a simple question uh, which you require clarification. Obviously, there are going to be times where you might be critical of one or two of his decisions. Now, they're in the, a multi-million pound business where their decisions can affect a lot of people. It can affect the financial standing of a club. And we're looking for them to be right more than they are wrong. Now, I know it's a pressure job, but having said that, if you want to be a referee, you've got to live with that pressure. I have to live with being the pressure of a manager. So why should they be immune from the same pressures that I am and the players and everybody else are under? Well, you've got the three top teams uh, whose destiny is going to be sorted, or fate is going to be sorted out, actually, on the last uh, game of the season. Uh, there's so many combinations that one could pick. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't even worth... Well, it's not worth working out, in actual fact. I mean, obviously, we're hoping to be one of those two clubs that gets automatic promotion and not necessarily to go in the playoffs. How does the tension get to you? And obviously, you're, you're human. I mean, are you happy at home? Well, I try not to be. I mean, the players seem to be quite relaxed. Uh, He's not himself, that's for sure. I can, I can see he's not himself. He's waking up very early in the morning. I turn over, I look at him, his hands behind his head, wide, eyes wide open, looking at the ceiling. He's, uh, he's definitely not himself. He's got his mind on it, definitely. He's worried about it, I think. He's nervous, like we all are. The tension is getting to him. The tension is getting to us all. <laughs> can, I, can I survive tomorrow? I, I just don't know. I've got a ticket for the game. But I keep thinking, do I need this pressure? I mean, I, I shan't enjoy it. I should be on the en ed end of my seat through the whole of the game. And I think, is it worth it? Why don't I just go off somewhere, you know, go and do some shopping, spend some money. And when I come back, at half past five, it'll all be over. But I can't, I can't, I can't keep away. I've got to be there. I've got to be there. <laughs> It's the final game. It's important for three clubs. It's important for us. Uh, there's nothing else we can do, really, other than uh, if we can fix the result before we go. <laughs> the players know what's required. We know what's required. We've got to go there to Leicester and try and win the game if we win the game. Come on, hey. All the best, hey, boys. Well, it doesn't really matter what anybody else does then at that stage. If we lose the game or we draw, then we are, to some extent, dependent upon what the other teams do. <laughs> They're not as big as I thought they were going to be. Yeah, they're going to have, they're going to have James E. Oldfield. All right, boys. Now, you don't need me to say too much today. You know what's required. Let's go out to look to win the game. We don't have to win it in the first few minutes. Be nice and sensible. Let's impose our own authority on the game. You've done it brilliantly all the season, so there's no reason why you can't go out today. 
irrespective of what happens, if you give me today a performance like you had the other night, with attitude, commitment and character, I'll settle for that, because that's what you've given me most of the season. OK, so let's keep our standards. That's the standard we set at West Brom on the opening day of the season. Let's take it there today. If we get the rubber, the green, we're on our way. Yo. If you're shitting yourself, just imagine what me and Bag are doing. Come on! Come on! It's the either a loan from the HFS or it's the bank manager's happy. Good luck. See you later. Cheers, son. wandering out and it's just gone over your head. Your man's gone out, the whole field's gone beyond. We'd make a change on the corners. Elite, you'll pick up uh, Kelly, Barnes's oh. man. You'll pick Kelly up yeah. on the corners, OK? Yeah. You'll then pick North up, the five, OK? Yeah, because... Jock, you'll do the zone, OK? Can we, can we just sort that out as well? Like, the last one, Chris was picking up righty. It was Dino and Bob picking up with two, and we had no zone man. If our zone gets pulled out like Jock Bryson now, Mark, you've got to be across in the in the hole in the three. Do you understand? No, you don't, no. obviously. Should he be special? We're talking the corner. Yeah. No, he's marking at a corner. Who's he marking? Yes, he's marking at the, he's at the near post with Oldfield and James, him and Deansy there. All right. So it's, it's him marking with... Uh, we Deansy. still need a zone in there. Yeah, Wilster zone. In the corner. What, in the front? Oh, no, the Jock's the zone. Yeah, post zone. Chris is on the edge. Jock's come off on taking nearly a mile no. instead of Jock. That's all the only difference. <laughs> well, right, it's on the edge of the box. Chris, you are. That's right, that's right. Well, if he's, if he's out there, we'll put it. What I'm saying is that six year old man has got to be in front. If he's out there. Yeah, Jock's got to be out Get tight. Who's going? Get together. Do your job.
it's important we keep our shape at yep. the back, the two centre halves, because all they're doing is trying to pull you out and get the midfield runner <coughs> in. So it's important if one of you's gone, the other one's got to be in, and the two <coughs> full backs have got to be narrow.
wonderful return, as I said. I'm sure I remember this day, the fans will remember it, the players will remember it. An absolute wonderful ovation. The boys have done brilliant. You know, it's a team spirit, teamwork.